Hello, this is Haka Devine, and I'm here with SAP 1000. This is one of the main S one of the many SAPs that at are, are mentioned a lot in in what is known as the cactus verse. That is SAP 1000 and beings from what is known as SAP 4000. We'll be going over that in, in the next installment. Today, we're going over SCP-1000, also known as Bigfoot. Let's begin. Item number, SCP-1000, Object Class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures. All media reports relating to SCP-1000 are to be examined for potential verif verifiability. All organizations and individuals investigating SCP-1000's existence are to be kept under surveillance by Mobile Task Force Zeta-1000 and discredited or administered in Essex. All physical or scientific SCP-1000's existence must be retrieved and kept in Foundation custody and replaced with decoy items if necessary. Alleged sightings of SCP-1000 must always be investigated by MTF Zeta-1000 however trivial to claim. Absolutely a no contact with wild or captive instances of SCP-1000 and is allowed without prior approval by Director Jones. Any interaction between SCP-1000 and humans, including Foundation personnel, must be reported to Director Jones immediately. Description SCP-1000 is, is a nocturnal, omnivorous, a plaspide in the a hominini, hominini branch, along with genera of Han and Homo. Adults range in from 1.5 to 5 meters, or sorry, 5 to 10 feet in height, and weigh between 90 and 270 kilograms, which is 200 to 600 pounds. They have gray, brown, black, red, and occasionally white fur. They possess large eyes with good vision, a pronounced brow bridge, and a agatal chest on the, for on the forehead similar to that of, of the gorilla. Oh, right, that's crest, my bad. But present in both sexes. Their intelligence is on par with that of pan and troglodytes, the common chimpanzee. That doesn't seem quite right, but whatever. Hmm. SCP-1000 evolved alongside Homo sapiens, existing in contemporaneously with frontal humans and humans in large numbers until 10,000 to 15,000 years ago when the extinction event eliminated all but 1-5% to of their population, most likely caused by humans. This event was triggered by SCP-1000 contracting an anomalous pseudo-disease classified as SCP-1000-F1. This disease is passed on at a genetic level and affects every present-day instance of SCP-1000. The majority of SCP-1000 instances are immune to the effect. Those who are not born immune quickly die. Hmm. The effect of SCP-1000-F1 is as follows. Even any e e hominid, including humans, chimpanzees, bonobos, and non immune instances of SCP-1000, that directly or indirectly observes an instance of SCP-1000 has a minimum 2% chance of being instantly killed through anomalous means via permanent cessation of brain function. I'm guessing that basically translates to your brain immediately stops functioning altogether and you die. This percentage is cumulative, and the longer a human views SP-1000, the higher the chance of instantaneous death ex increases, at a rate of 
plus 1% chance per 20 minutes of viewing. This effect varies between individual members of SCP-1000 species, but some um, individuals carrying a death chance of 90%. The effect is also produced by dead individuals, though small fur samples do not exhibit the effect. Known means of preventing this effect are small scale only and include redacted. See attached documentation. Level 3 e clearance required. Don't worry, we basically have uh, more clearance than O5. Usually. Because of uh, SCP 1000's close re relation to humanity, it is considered likely that SCP 1000 F1 could eventually transfer to human carriers. Any instance of SCP 1000 finding its way to a large to a major population center could it constitute an redacted class end of the world scenario, but with a minimum death toll of redacted, and possible extinction of humanity. Fortunately, SCP-1000 appears to be in appears to instinctively avoid human contact. It is not currently feasible to exterminate SCP-1000 entirely. The highest known on population concentrations of SCP-1000 are at present located in the Pacific Northwest region of North America and the Himalayan mountain range in Asia. As of an unknown date, these populations remain in extent. SCP-1000's presence and data expunged have also been documented within the past five years on every continent. All known Un unsignificant populations of SCP-1000 located near human population centers have been eliminated. SCP-1000 came to the attention of the Foundation via contact by Dr. Franz M. in 1400s. 1400? Huh. With the Children of the Sun, who identified themselves as outcast members of the Serpent's Hand. This group has been completely destroyed by a foundation due to their reluctance to surrender information about SCP-1000, SCP Unknown, and SCP Unknown. Since reclassified as SCP-1000 Unknown and SCP-1000 Unknown. Remaining members have either joined the foundation or have gone into hiding, presumably as members of the Serpent's Hand. Weapons, tools, and other unique technological resources in possession of the organization have been classified as SCP-1001 and through SCP-1000 Unknown. These resources have been made use of by the Foundation in multiple instances. For a full let's see document and and 1035-I-34-Y, level 3 clearance required. Access to surviving ex-members of, of the Children of the Sun is restricted to personnel with with clearance and for 1000, unless given direct authorization and for contact by Director Jones. <sighs> Further information is available all to personnel with clearance level 3 out of 1000 or above. For personnel with clearance and 3 1000 or, uh, or above are required to read document alpha. A fifteen ninety six one thousand. Addendum M one thousand four or sixty six X. Update special containment procedures. As of unknown date, SC one thousand special containment procedures no longer include procedure five sixteen in Lumina. That expunge indicates that SP one thousand may be developing a resistance to the sonic element that expunge. Will not develop further. Or so that procedure or 516 Lumina can still be used in emergency situations. Investigation into alternate it means of reliably keeping SCP-1000 away from human and population centers is underway. Whether SCP-1000 and resistance to procedure 516 Lumina was calculated and such may be assigned and SCP-1000 redacted. Or coincidental by a chance of natural species variation is not known at this time. Level 3 clearance required.
Oh right, I probably forgot to say this at the beginning of the video, so, let, uh, so I might as well say it right now. If you like the video so far, please leave a like on the video. And uh, please subscribe to the channel. If you have anything to say about the video, please leave it in the comments. I will definitely be reading it because uh, I don't get enough comments to not want to read them. <laughs> anyway, Document Alpha 1596-1000. Missive from Director or Jones. <clears throat> You've probably heard the rumors before now. Everyone without the clearance level to know or better or wants to get there or dig in. Did you hear Sasquatch is an SCP? Are we gonna capture or contain Bat Boy next? Yes. SCP 1000 is Bigfoot. I'm sure you've snickered. Don't worry, contrary to Rubrus, we don't actually assign you to Keter duty for finding something humorous. You think Bigfoot is funny because we want you to think Bigfoot is funny. We've bankrolled whole Hollywood comedians and face and farcical documentaries, paid off men in gorilla suits, it's per perpetrated hoaxes with bear prints and goat fur, bribed and brainwashed cartoonists to get especially silly depictions on Torrent Television. Even the term Bigfoot comes from us, planted in the media in 1958, a term people would find even harder to take seriously than Sasquatch. Why? We'll get to that. The information in the article you've already read isn't entirely true. There are two direct lies and plenty of lies of omission. There is no such thing as the anomalous pseudo-disease referred to as SCP-1000-F1. SCP-1000 does not possess a magical death aura. In fact, SV-1000 does not directly exhibit any anomalous effect whatsoever. We also lied about SV-1000's intelligence. Ah, oh, this is, as I kind of guessed, based on what I've already heard and read about SV-1000. SV-1000 aren't chip imp level smart, they're smarter. To be precise, they're exactly as smart as us. That brings us to the lies of omission. That's what this letter is for. The lies came from me, so I figured the truth should come from me as well. This is the story of the we got from the children of the sun who defected to us. It's a story we didn't believe, refused to believe at first. As you've already read, the apes we call all SP-1000 evolved alongside us. We walked in in the daytime, they walked in the nighttime. Our nocturnal siblings in the shadows. But while we were still wandering hunter or gatherers, they changed, like we would a few thousand years later. Tools, weapon, agriculture, domesticated animals, stable settlements, as human entity blinked in the in place is to seen the sun, SC-1000's population exploded across the night. They blanketed the a planet in tens of billions. They made things that we still can't comprehend, even though we've thoroughly studied surviving pieces. Organic technology. They made the trees and birds of prey grow into fast-moving ships. Herds of animals that became trains. Bushes that became flying vehicles. From insects and pigeons, they made things equivalent to cell phones, televisions, computers, atomic bombs. The children describe vast shining cities stretching across glaciers and penetrating the deepest caverns, grown skyships of ivory and spider silk, creatures tending in them with hundreds of blinking eyes. We were real, rare, like real as now, a few hundred thousand left at best. We avoided their settlements just like wild animals today avoid ours. SV-1000 and understood we were intelligent like them, but avoided us just as we avoid them. Saw us as fairies, as gnomes, ascribed that as nat supernatural of powers. Kind of weird because there are fairies in in the same sort of universe as that mentions SV one thousand. Said we ate bad children while they slept in the in daylight. They fenced off our, our dwindling wild populations and conservatories. Outlawed poaching, but in the underground consumed our bones as aphrodisiacs. 
<laughs> Reminds me of a certain Futurama episode. Anyway. Then their civilization fell, and we did. By we, I don't mean the foundation. By we, I mean humanity. The story is muddy. Supposedly, a trickster forest god showed humanity a favor, showed us the master's tools and how to use them. What we did, we don't know. Perhaps they hunted us. Perhaps we were simply afraid. Perhaps it was just as they fenced us in, unintentionally or not. We simply don't know what the truth is. Somehow, we acquired SV-1000, its own technology. And with it, we instigated an SK dominance shift in which humanity became the dormant species, the dominant species of Earth. We wiped out 70% of SCP-1000's population in a single day. The day of flowers, the children called it. Supposedly, every flower bloomed that day, while our enemies died in their sleep. Then we hunted the rest down, but we, we went farther than just killing them. With a few of the more twisted out of SCP-1000's devices, we drove the survivors mad, even those hiding beyond our reach. We trapped them in their own minds, blocking higher functions and leaving their bodies to fend for themselves like any ordinary ape. We slaughtered their living machines and burned their vast shining cities with SV-1000's blow weapons that reduced everything to slurry and dust that washed or blew away in spring rain and wind. We left no traces, not even our own memory. We turned one of the weapons uh, on ourselves, wiped out any knowledge of SV-1000 and the greatest civilization the planet had ever seen. <sighs> Only a few humans protected themselves from the effect, kept the forbidden knowledge, just in case. The rest of us went back to hunter-gatherers, none the wiser. Which brings us to, the, to, the, to today. You're going to read that read all about this in level 3 documentation, but I'll give you the short version here. SCP-1000 are somehow regaining their forgotten intelligence and knowledge. Maybe they never truly lost it, we don't know. This is why the ever-increasing number of Bigfoot sightings is so worrying, why the attempts at contact, however indecipherable, are even more worrying. Yes, SCP-1000 are just like us. That's what makes them so dangerous. We wiped them from history and memory. We dissolved their civilization. And we... We slaughtered most of their species. Just ask yourself. If they got the chance, what more would they do to us? Addendum 1056D. Instances of SCP-1000 have tried to make contact with the Foundation personnel on multiple occasions. Most of these attempts at contact have that untranslated through recent attempts show that some instances of SCP-1000 are capable of communicating in English. SCP-1000-104 or why? That is a lot of reading, and I don't think we have time for that. But we can read it, it, it what's here. Certain acquired documents contain extensive references to SV-1000. Relevant is that the documents appear to be composed by entities associated directly with the location known as the Wanderer's Library. Context or significance of document and details are not yet clarified. Addendum 1276A 
numerous anomalous objects with a known connection to SCP-1000 that expunge prior cyclical iterations. As one example, SCP-2273 may not have a point of origin in a parallel well, timeline, but instead a prior iteration, SCP-2932, SCP-2511, and other sources of living cultural insight into SCP-1000, or a variation, all present consistent and inconsistencies, which may be used to create a fuller picture of nature of these iterations, through oh, conclusions are uncertain. Addendum 1276Q, Special Report, that expunge the unnumbered black box of anomalous as item anchored underneath the structure. What do you mean by the structure? Oh, SCP-2000. We'll read about that another time. It's likely the most significant anomalous object known to have been utilized. Central to understanding in SCP-1000's anomalous capabilities, including capabilities not developed directly, but access from prior thought at a expunge, modern day relevance to the Foundation and to society at large in a scenario of co general containment failure. <sighs> Log 1000 AD 065 X1. The following is a rough translation of a recent SCP 1000 and attempts at communication with Foundation personnel on an unknown date. We forgive you. Given choice for now, not forever. Let us back in. And so, that is SCP-1000. Ending off with them saying that they forgive humanity for now. And making a pretty reasonable demand after what humanity did to them. SU-1000, also known as Bigfoot or the Children of the Night, were around with humanity for the longest time, until suddenly, somehow, humanity it was given the tools of SU-1000 and some rudimentary knowledge of how to use them against SCP-1000. And so, out of fear, Humanity did exactly that. And then, after they were done completely ruining the existence of another species, they wiped their memories of it. Guess humanity couldn't handle the guilt. <sighs> if you like this video, Please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time with... What is it? SCP-4000? Is that the forest that you can't have the same name for twice? Oh. Whoops. <laughs> we'll see. See you next time. Bye.